These dunes are incredible, and I'll let you know where they are very soon. Oh, <laughs> this episode is packed. Oh. Destinations you may never have heard of. However, not without our fair share of hurdles. Oh, I forgot to fill up. Yes. We have a bunch of coastal landmarks to see before making a treacherous ferry voyage across the Gulf. Back. I didn't steer. <laughs> we got there, Marka. We are pink, finally! <laughs> Let's pick it back up right where we left last time. We are about to leave Rapid Bay. Go where the wind takes us. If you haven't seen our last episode, we are on tour in South Australia. Time to pick back up. We're leaving Rapid Bay today and seeing the sights as we head along the coast. What do we think, Monique? Favourite beach so far? This is my favourite beach so far. Glorious. <laughs> I had my dick emoji freaking <laughs> floating out there, just lapping up sun. And I could actually float out there and not be freezing cold. Like, it was just stunning. Look at it. I could have just stayed here all day. Last time we came, it was all open around there, but it's all closed now. To be honest, this beach is nicer at this time anyway. It's all sandy. It's all really cool. This is Second Valley. Highly recommend. It's just one of the many spots on this coastline, which is absolutely mint. We've got a fair bit of ground to cover today. We are making a few stops this one is Selix Beach. Super hard packed, sandy beach. Basically can actually drive any car you want on this one, most of the year round. It's so weird that there's like two little drivers. Hey, welcome to Selix Beach, South Australia. Look at our setup. It's really good if you've got a caravan, obviously. It's like a massive awning, but yeah. Conditions are mint. Blows my mind that there's like Mazda 6s down here. <laughs> and, and VW Golfs. And... That's the other thing, it's very hard packed beach. You can basically bring any car down here. But holy crap, South Australia's turning it on. Look at it, it's Miko. We have absolutely nailed the weather here. Selix beach, pretty picturesque with the super red cliffs behind the beach and the blue water. Just another spot I highly recommend dropping into if you nail the weather. About to hit the road again, we have a three hour drive hooking straight through Adelaide and down the York Peninsula. We are heading to a campground called the Bamboos Campground. It looks to be some sort of beach camping cliff edge situation, so keen to get there, get set up and see what we're in for. Welcome to the York Peninsula. We found a camp spot down here, just behind the sand dunes, the beach is through that track there. Yeah, it's not bad, good spot to bring everyone, heaps of room for the caravan. Let's show you guys around the campsite, pretty cool. You're trying to hide your tracks and no one can find your camp spot, mate. <laughs> Yeah, this That's is really cool. Cool move. The track away. <laughs> Talk us through. How? Where did we start this morning? Port Wollonga, Fleury Peninsula. Drove through Adelaide City into where are we now? We're at York Peninsula. Hang on. When did we pick up a mad bike? Did she go for? Yeah, Monique's turning Frieda into know, some she's... 80s rock hard chick. <laughs> She's like, well, because I asked the question, I asked Frida what music she likes, and she said all kinds of music, and then she said, I take that back. I don't like the heavy metal, yeah. and it's like, you're not even System of the Down. <laughs> <laughs> she really is a forward drive bogey. Yeah, 100%. She, she suits it. She suits having a mouth. Mm. I don't. I deserve my time. Tasha's hating the music. G'day, guys. Mark here. And I'm a grey nomad now, and I have grey water. <laughs> Come for a walk through my campsite. You... I'll show you around the Maverick. How's the angle? We're going to do a quick run through of, of the Maverick because it's pretty cool. We are in a remote South Australian campsite. We are. We are very remote. Can't see anything for days. There's no one around. We have the outdoor kitchen to start with. We also have a 
indoor kitchen. 240 volt here. There's this plugs into this light here so you can see when you're cooking. We got running water on the outside. We got running gas. We can cook things. We've got wind deflectors. This is what I like to call the pantry. You can take the TV from out there and put it in here. I actually haven't opened this. Oh, that's for the TV, that makes sense. Yep. <laughs> it's actually automatic, you press a button and it winds out. It sort of self-supports, so you can do it one man and then just drop the legs, it's pretty easy. Okay. Yeah, Jeez. I've seen him setting it up, guys. It's pretty quick to set up, like considering five what, minutes, that... what it is. We've got the fridge, pull-out slide fridge. That's your fridge you put on there. This is, yeah, this is just my fridge I've had forever. Uh, toolboxes, gas. It takes and... two gas tanks or one gas tank and one pram. <laughs> okay. That's where I store the pram. Probably take four prams if you had four kids. Probably good. Yeah. The diesel tank for the diesel heater. So he's got heating and cooling heating. in this van. Although the weather in South Australia has finally turned it up. So it went from ice cold. crazy cold to now it's kind of hot. <laughs> yeah. It's so you're not allowed to say it's hot. It's bloody just all right. It's nice. Oh, it's not hot. It's just lovely. <laughs> We've got more 240 here. We've got outdoor lights. We've got... Oh, even the handle lights up. Isn't that pretty? Well, this is the interior and... Um, Hey, Holy sh! This isn't the nav. Oh, uh, what are you? Why is everyone always in my camp? <laughs> oh my god, it's so cold outside. I can't deal. <laughs> well, Mac, can you show me around? <laughs> oh, no, no, we've, the mic is. we've lost a microphone. Marco, found it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on in. Okay. Welcome to my house. Don't want to get uh, copyrighted. So first we have the kitchen. Ooh, my favourite place. No. Plenty of views. You have 360 degree view. Oh, minus that one. But skylight, which also opens up to, in case you need a fire exit. <laughs> 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 which uh, I believe that's a smoke alarm there, actually. And we also have the air conditioning. Hot water system. I I think it's about a 20 litre hot water system. We have a diesel heater that's all comes from underneath. underneath so where heater. does it heat? Like, where does that come from? Uh, that one comes from down here as a vent. Oh, okay. Um, but this one up here is also a reverse cycle. So if you plugged in the 240 volt, you can run the air con or the heater. Or the heater, there. okay. Yeah, look, it, it took a few days and we learned some <laughs> things. So it's been, it's been really fun to just keep finding things, I guess. Okay, and you can tuck that. Tuck that right oh. away in case you need a D4. Yeah, perfect. Um, up here That's we've got power light, fridge, socket, TV, DVD, pump. We also have indoor speakers as well as outdoor speakers. These are the bunks. So we've mostly been using these just to put our clothes. If Very you, spacious. Yeah, if you had two, if you had three kids, you could have one in the bed with you, one up here, one down there. They're almost double. Jesus, that's like, I'm going to say 1500. Kings. Oh, the and the shower. Oh, what? oh Jesus. <laughs> What, what are you doing? doing? Communal shower. Dude, you no. can't park this thing anywhere and not expect everyone to use it. <laughs> uh, we have a, a fan and light. We have the shower here. Obviously, the curtain blocks off the toilet and the sink. And a mirror. It's actually, when you're in there, it's actually um, pretty spacious. The outdoor shower, just in this compartment, which has hot and cold. This is where you just keep your spare cartons. Beer slide, fridge slide. Holy heck, look at these sliders. Whoa! Yeah, I'm off road with that. They give fat bars run for their money, that wasn't it? This is our campsite for tonight. I think this is probably an, another episode. I have no idea where I am filming. Been going wherever the wind takes us, we have been. Yeah. <laughs> So we found this campsite last. We thought we'd stay here because tomorrow we're gonna. It's called. Wollong. Wollonga. Wollong. Ferry to we're Lucky wrong. Bay. Wollong. Yeah, I, and the ferry oh. takes us over to Lucky Bay. Cuts out a good few hours of driving. So we haven't confirmed that yet, but I'm we sure will TJ's. It for you guys. He's voiceovering this right now, telling you whether it's uh, correct or not. Because we are from Queensland, we never get sunsets over the water and this Bamboos campground is located on the northwestern side of the York Peninsula which means we've gone down to check it out. Absolutely love a sunset over the water guys, not gonna lie. One of York Peninsula's preferred camping zones just because it's easy to get out of the wind here. To be honest, it's mostly accessible with a two-wheel drive vehicle. Probably don't actually need a four-wheel drive. There are no facilities here, no barbecues, toilets, and permits are required. Absolutely epic spot. The views are awesome. I'm gonna head back to camp and set up my Outback Tourer rooftop. 
because tomorrow we have a treacherous ferry trip to contend with. If you've been following the channel for some time, you'll know McLean and Natasha are terrible with seasickness. As you can see, with such terrible conditions, <laughs> things don't go to plan. She's like, get me off this boat. Feeling better, Tash? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you feel me. There he is, the walking ghost. <laughs> After what has been a very big day for us, we're dropping into Port Lincoln National Park to find camp. Off-road, trying to find a track. Hey, Zalia. Uh, sorry, find a camp, and <laughs> we both uh, we were got very seasick today, and um, this off-road track is not helping the current sore belly of throwing up on the boat. <laughs> So aggressive. You know how Max bad at picking a camp spot? I don't. It gets even worse when he's got a camp spot. <laughs> but we did the river road up in Port Lincoln. Not a bad spot. What do you reckon, Dad? I reckon there's a lot of rocks. Like heaps of rocks. Um, apparently, campground one had less rocks. It's a bit Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you stand up. No, do you know what's even worse? No, don't do it. <laughs> what? Well, then we can go to number one. Yeah, and then from and number one, we'll come back here. And then we'll set up here again. <laughs> and then you'll be happy. So we've got the old Macca getting a campsite. The left. <laughs> So there's a bit at stake. We're here for two to three days because we're not moving for Christmas. So Maka, he wants to get the perfect Christmas campsite. So don't blame him. That is what's currently happening. <laughs> Look at that sunset. Private beach. It's a bit chilly though. <laughs> As you would have just seen, we did the Ford Ranger giveaway, super cool. The winner, he was extremely excited as you can imagine. Yeah, that's really starting to wrap up the year for us. Um, man, what a big year it's been. Thank you guys so much for your support. What a spot. Is that the spot? That's the spot. Is that how you do it in the Truby? Do you want to say hi to Frida's family? Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, number five meters. I just poor Mac because he has trouble even when he doesn't have a trailer. Double the trouble. So many options. Jamin! They're too relaxed to worry about caravans parking. I told you we couldn't get on those trips to take See you later. <laughs> Jamin's going to watch the sunset down in another, another postcode almost. We actually sort of get the sunset out of the water. How cool. Okay, 11 hours later, we are set up and ready for camp, just in time for sunset. We get a seal coming past camp. That is incredible. I've never seen a seal come past my camp before. <laughs> Right and early for Christmas, guys. I'm going to need you to leave a comment. Rate Macca's dad Christmas get up. That is spectacular. I'm giving it 11 out of 10 and 110% commitment. As you can see, this is a pretty cozy little campsite. We're nestled in amongst the trees. Amazing view of the water. This is a very relaxing spot to stay. 
morning view. Yeah, lovely. I'm uh, actually watching a bit of TJ and Mac. Yeah. <laughs> Road thongs on. Yeah, mate, got the off roadies on. <laughs> Just gotta be careful. We, it's more the. Uh, more the knees don't like it anymore. The <laughs> suspension, I got the grip, just not the suspension. You need to upgrade the knees. <laughs> Alrighty, welcome to the day after Christmas. We've been here for a couple of days now. Didn't really film it much yesterday, except for when a bloody seal came past. That was a bit unusual. And up here, so the edge of this cliff is just undermined the whole way along. If you ever here, don't walk on the very edge because it's obviously breaking away all the time. You can like see the tree roots coming out the bottom. Yeah, that's crazy. If that was to drop off while you were walking along it, it wouldn't be good, but that's probably the worst bit. But does it the whole coastline's sort of a bit like that? <laughs> it just crumbles. <laughs> <laughs> Will he make it to the summit? <laughs> <laughs> One. <laughs> Last push. Today's plan, maybe potentially Coffin Bay, I've been told. Yeah, we think Coffin Bay, try and stay out of the wind still. Um, it's pretty nice today though. Yeah, today's actually not too bad. Uh, it will pick up though, according to the old Willie's weather. Yeah. We've been here for, this is our third day, so we're gonna keep moving. Weather permitted, probably Coffin Bay. So this has been our little camp spot for the last few days. That goes this little utensil organ. I think that's what it is. I've been using it for that anyway. From Buck Wild, you can get them on Outback equipment. Foldable bag full of different compartments. It has the Velcro and I'm just lucky the Mitt's alloy canopy door. It has a rail at the top so you can just Velcro it straight on that and hang it down. Perfect for my cup three. But it also rolls up into a little carry bag. Pretty handy. So yeah, you can get these things on Outback equipment. Come down here. Look that. There's another little thing I've been using actually. Clear top bags from Buckwild as well. So they've got the clear top here, dividers, which are, you can Velcro wherever you want. This one I've got some lighting. It's a bit messy, don't mind my salad of uh, mixed salad or camera gear. <laughs> uh, we've got the charging, that's right. Have you ever seen that many USBs in one go? <laughs> Actually, I've got to charge my main camera that I'm using right now soon. Some other little cameras, GoPro. I also just have my drone right here to access quickly. Then I can use all the red up gear here to charge everything. I've got uh, 12 volt Ziggies, USBs, you know, your inverter and everything. We've been here for three days and I've got 21% left, which is pretty good considering I've got no solar at the moment and it's a 100 amp hour battery. Time for us to hit the road over to Coffin Bay, which actually is not that far away. However, Stevie has a bunch of destinations on her list to tick off, so we're going the long way around. First stop past Mary Ellis Wreck Beach, a few sand dunes to experience here. Keen to get the nav up there and check these dunes out. Oh my god, freedom! Stevie, where are we? Mary Ellis Wreck Beach? Well, that's Mary Ellis Wreck Beach. We're currently on the Sleaford Sand Hills, and there's an entrance to the Wanna Track, which I think goes over all the sand dunes. Are you cold or something? I am. It's windy up here. <laughs> you can drive down the edge down. Yeah. Wait, how are you getting down? Yeah, probably lucky. <laughs> lucky you guys stopped there. Eh? <laughs> it's, it's like, boom, dead drop off. I threw it on the drain, I'm like, mm, that'll do. Yeah, that's the whole track. That's the Wanna Track. So that goes, remember how Jamie said on the walkie talkie he went the other side yeah, before the so main road? Meets up. I didn't know it met up, but that's the track. That's right. Then it goes, I think, up to those dunes as well. Bit windy up here on top. We're going to wrap back around into where the water is and uh, hope there's some lunch in there. Hopefully I don't get bogged. Sick spot, yeah. No one's out down yet. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is Tassie all over again. We got too excited to hit the beach. <laughs> The Sleaford Sand Dunes, definitely a spot you're going to want to stop and check out if you've got a four-wheel drive. 
Stevie and I broke away from the rest of the crew because we wanted to go down and explore the bottom here. However, had to turn around. There's a reason I was down there. It's blocked off the dune. He's covering the track. Rest of the convoy decided to head into Port Lincoln to do some washing and stuff. So Stevie and I thought we'd come and check out this bottom side, but can't really get to it because it just runs straight into the edge of that steep bank there. Track around in there, but it just turns into mangrove swamp mud <laughs> and sharp rocks. Yeah, we might just have lunch here on the track. No one's coming down. Yeah. Salad wrap or roll? <laughs> Alrighty, we got a couple more spots to check out before we head to Coffin Bay. This headland was a pretty cool spot. Has its own runway out to bloody check the surf. And a perfect opportunity for me to show Stevie my latest dance moves. So we come and check out this lookout because it's got that wicked little track out to the end there. How cool. But it's cold and windy. So we are heading back to Coffin Bay. Let's go. Let's go. So you've got a list yeah, and you're right. checking it off. Yeah, yeah, I just checked off. Mary Ellis Wreck Beach, Sleaford Sandhills and September Beach, three in the morning. So good. Red Banks Beach is my last spot over this side. Meanwhile, the others are over at Coffin Bay National Park. We found this nice beach called Flat Rock and um, driven down here and uh, sand's a little soft, so I'm gonna air down so I don't beach myself. <laughs> Jamin's working on the caravan and I get my tough terrain deflators out. Vending machine with oysters, but it's because they come from there. I cannot say I've seen an oyster vending machine before. This is Coffin Bay, very well known for its oysters, and they ship them worldwide. If you're in Australia, there is a good chance they come from here. Time to meet up with the others over at Coffin Bay National Park. Speed limit's only actually 40 kilometers an hour because there's emus all through here and other wildlife. Oh, look, it's so cute. Speak of the devil, here's another one. Way cuter than cassowary. Emus everywhere. We've, we've nailed the weather today, so absolutely need. Alright, welcome to Avoid Bay. Don't know if I'd avoid it, hey Dad. I definitely wouldn't avoid this one. Um, or even avoid point. I wouldn't avoid that either. It's fabulous. Our uh, newest bikini model. Hey. Team Toyota and Team Nissan going on this trip. I've just realised. <laughs> what a spot. Dangerous day to be an oyster. Absolutely dangerous. <laughs> Today we're going to hang out here till about. I know, one o'clock, a bit after lunch, because look at the spot. And then um, the girls are gonna go into Oyster Headquarters in Coffin Bay. Oyster experience you can do in there. They show you how to shuck them and farm them and all the things. Holy heck, what a spot. This national park is mint. Louise told us there's a cave around here, apparently. I'm gonna go look for it. If you are ever in this area, Coffin Bay National Park is one of those spots you are not gonna want to miss. It is incredible in here. Highly recommend coming to check it out. Oh. Gorgeous view. Pull up in here, boys. How cool is that? So there's like a little cave here. Just come around the point and it's even more protected because it's the wind can't oh, get in here. It's so incredible. So clear and gorgeous. Nice. Really don't know if the conditions are good enough, eh? To be wearing Crocs. <laughs> this is a void bay on this side of the national park. We're protected from the swell. The other side has this surf. 
Yes, yeah, so we'll head back from our private beach. <laughs> which is a secluded private beach. <laughs> so cool. Guys and girls, if you've got this far through the episode and you haven't subscribed yet, it helps us out so much if you do. We can bring you bigger and better videos each and every week. Really does help us out. Thank you for all your support. Stevie and I, we're on the other side of the national park here. This is where the surf hits, like I was talking about before. Thought we'd come and check it out. Stevie has a few more list items to check off, so we're breaking away again. This spot is a bit of a detour down to the Greenly Rock Pools. So this is on Stevie's list to see, Greenly Rock Pools. Greenly Rock Pools, Stevie's bucket list item for here. Happy? Yes, it's very, it's, I can't believe how quiet it is. Are you gonna go for a swim? Yeah. <laughs> list. This is the only, the only thing that I sent to you that I wanted to go. Yeah, see? I'm glad that we're here. Yeah. Stevie's bucket list item for here. While Team Navarro was down exploring the Greenly Rock Pools, the others have found an absolutely amazing campsite this is Sharinga beach pretty well known for its surf some pretty incredible camp spots to check out Sharinga, this is the beach a few camp spots down here absolute paradise today we're going to be exploring the dunes going the boys are going to surf i'm not going to so yeah you would have seen team navara coming in late to camp discovered there's team toyota and team navara <laughs> keep getting split up into team navara team nav <laughs> no one's getting stuck here i don't think anyone's been bogged in team navara yet no no way <laughs> Jamin's over there being a fancy pants in the troopy with the best setup ever, his induction cooking. The definition of, that's relaxed. That is relaxed, that's, eh? Yeah, that's, compared to what we, we went through, that's relaxed. That guy is 100% relaxed. Just watching some YouTube. I uh, haven't seen it, so it's the first time. Sharinga Beach is a short detour off the Flinders Highway. It has a bunch of really cool set out campsites you can see here and get to wake up to one of the best views you could ever hope for. Incredible afternoon conditions. However, that night there was a major, major blow up. we saw the camp spot we were at is insanely windy so we sort of come up to the dunes and cook a bit of brekkie not bad oh, i reckon i want to go for a surf yeah let's get done we're in the desert now <laughs> french toast oh my god so keen french toast for the wind how is your rubbish bag going? Fucking great. Yeah. Going great investment. Yeah, so good. Game changer. Sharinga Beach boasts some pretty impressive dunes. It's basically a desert in here and I'm a little disappointed. Didn't spend longer to explore this incredible section of the coastline. We just were on a bit of a deadline for our next destination. 
I've ever even seen it this way. Feels like there's a lot of coastline here I'm yet to see. Pretty safe to say I'm gonna come back here at some point in my life to have a bit more of a look around. Sure is a pretty cool spot. It's about time we keep moving, but what do you know, there seems to be an issue with the cruiser again. What do you think it's gonna be this time? What you're about to witness is two cruisers docking, so. I forgot to fill up. I got a quarter of a tank left, which might last me 100 k's towing that thing. So we're gonna try and siphon it. See how this goes. So we got the troopy higher than mine. And we're hoping diesel just flows woo, into my tank. Oh, you gotta suck it through. Oh, this is your doing. I've heard you're good at sucking it. Ah! So uh, what do you charge per litre for off-grid fuel? You better be good at sucking. <laughs> oh, I got a trusty King Graham tool kit. We'll grab the knife. We'll cut this. Can you? Yeah, just in there. I wish we had a jiggle has. Okay, so that didn't work. So we're gonna go for a drive and see what fuel we can find around the place. There's a weird looking cafe place we drove on the way past. Apparently there's fuel there. Yeah, me and Monique, we've only got 33s on, so it's actually quite quick for ours. And the cruisers, Team Cruisers on 37s. I think we only measured to a minute. 30 for a 37 from 15 to 40. Team Navarre on 33s. Team Nissan going first. We'll be here for days with the bloody Team Toyota. Oh, 37. Oh, thanks, Louis. Oh, mate. Throw on. Nice and quick. I'm on 15 there. See the difference in weight because it's exactly the same tyre and wheel combo, except and the exact same pressures except mine bags out like real flat and Monique's doesn't even bag hardly. Oh, then you got a bit of weight back in. Canopy weight going on. A canopy weight, but a rear tyre weight behind the axle weight. <laughs> All the weights going on. All the weight. Yeah, 35 will do. Yeah, if you're keen on checking out these tough terrain compressors, they're on outbackequipment.com.au. You can use the discount code too, TJJAX5. Get 5% off. Not bad, not a bad deal. Are you kidding me? Sharinga turn off, beach turn off, and Jamin said it's like a place you have to visit. But I also need fuel, so. Sharinga. <laughs> Sharinga store is just out on the highway before the Sharinga beach turn off. <laughs> Sharinga store. It turns out they did have a little bit of diesel there for Maca. This is one of those stores that has absolutely everything you could ever imagine inside. You like the kitty? <laughs> Definitely an interesting little stop if you want to grab a beer or something. Alrighty, we're on the road again today on the way to Streaky Bay, but we're gonna stop off at the Tully, okay? One of your bucket list items. Take you there, we'll show you what it's all about. But yeah, on the road again now. Alrighty, so I see you today, man. The conditions are not perfect. There's a lot of seaweed and um, the gunk in the rock for the sea, so we're not going to swim over there. But I can imagine if the conditions were good, that huge cave and everything, it'd be super cool to go swim in. But yeah, you can't always win. Yeah, overall, pretty cool. Cool spot to stop in if you're on the coastline. You can see the cars are literally parked on top of that cliff. Now, this is a pretty incredible cave to uh, check out. You're parked right on top of it, which I didn't even realise when I rocked up. I imagine if you got this in the right conditions, it would be an absolutely incredible spot to visit and swim at. However, we got it at low tide, windy, and a lot of seaweed lying around oh, everywhere. Oh, that one's cool. Oh, they are little fish tanks. Yeah, right? Yeah, they are. 
reckon? How cute! Kind of deep there. After Louis had brushed up on some non-existent bouldering skills, we decided to hit the road again off to our next camp spot for the trip. As soon as I laid eyes on that water, I knew I was going to have lunch down there. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Point Brown. This is a very cool camp spot. We have arrived just after lunch, so plenty of time to soak up the sun and go Not for a swim. Bad lunch spot. No, it's gorgeous. The Red Rock. Looks like Tasmania. The place I want to go to in Tassie. Oh, we got sweet chili Philly. Yeah. Holy. Yeah, could have them on wraps, yeah? Bay. St. Mary's Bay. But isn't it Brown's Point? Point Brown? Oh, Point Brown. In, um, off, around Smoky Bay. We're at Point Brown, we're kind of near Smoky Bay, so we thought we'd come in here for a camp tonight. But I pulled down on the beach for lunch, the others are up in the camp spot. Sick, so cool. The red rocks, the blue water, such a cool contrast. Love it. Oh, what do you think? Horrible spot. Horrible. Yeah. Fantastic. Have you got the caravan on camp spot up there? We do. It's in behind the dune, so it's still, we're still running away from winds down in South Australia. It seems to be a reoccurring issue. This one come up, brand, like not a breath of wind yesterday, and then bed, yeah. bedtime hit, and it's like whack, 40k an hour winds. It's like Matt Preston's face. there. Yeah, I'm lucky I'm in the caravan. I got no flappy boys, unlike uh, Louis and Mon. Yeah, You've been like... having dramas with your uh, flappy tent. Yeah. Caravan has been perfect. Not, not one flappy boy in sight. So. Well, even mine's been good, but I was. I was camped beside them, so I copped their flap. Oh, you heard that flap. They should come over with us. This is what I picture when, when guys say South Australia exploring it. It's the spots like this. But it's so nice. It's unreal. The bar set up. Got me bar. Where's the Coronas, mate? Yeah. Oh, yeah, where are the Coronas? Well, we're the West Ends. South oh, Australian West Ends. Big shout out to them because they taste great. All the Chook Tins. All the Chook Tins. Yeah. The Emu Tins. <laughs> hey, let me get a bowl opener. Mate. Superior opening for a superior taste. Not impressed. No. <laughs> <laughs> the one beer opener for me. <laughs> Holy crap, it doesn't get much better than this. Pulling up to camp here, I've got the boys. We just dug a hole so big that he ended up like <laughs> a hole off and tips over. <laughs> I'm one degree out on one the angle. So I've got the boys down here digging out, you know, getting the tent level. Got my level lap out. And no, was, yeah. no one wants to sleep on an angle, I'm telling no, you. No, I'm right there. <laughs> so a negative 0.5 of a degree out. 0.5? But, but if we flip it this way, because we got to allow for the buttons. I reckon I can deal with that. Okay, it's all good. Well, now it's the other way. <laughs> I, know, yeah. I, know I said this would happen. Like, <laughs> that level's bullshit. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> you got to do it both ways and then find the average. Oh, no, it's a baby on there now. You can deal bad. with that? My bad. Sleep's going to be on you. <laughs> <laughs> I can fix it. No, it's fine. Look, are you still gonna pay me for the job? Yeah. <laughs> well, do you know how much paperwork there was to get this done? Pretty soft. Here's a few little deflators. Finally got them out, mate. Yeah, I should have got these down a little earlier. <laughs> even though I even camped this morning, I was full noise trying to get out of that spot, mate. That, my friend, is the power of deflated tyres versus. <laughs> a bit of horsepower. I, go, I had a bit of pony too. I gave her a little extra just for show, but... <laughs> we are now on the way to Cactus Beach. Along the way, fair few interesting stops like this one. Oh, 
Welcome to the windmills. <laughs> Welcome back to Penang. We were here four years ago waiting for the Nullarbor to open because the bushfires are on. But... Oh yeah, bloody pop some ball water up for the grass. <laughs> it's actually pink this time. Oh my goodness. Unfortunately, uh, the first time I came it wasn't, but it is this time. Look. I'm so happy it's pink, finally! <laughs> Second time lucky. Yeah, it's crazy, I think. It is I know, stunning. it's gorgeous. I crack it a chook tin. Like. Woo, she's a frothy one. Oh, ah! oh! Did I get it? Go get it. Oh, Dad will get it. Dad the hero. Oh, it's very warm. Yeah, it's super warm. Oh, oh my hat. <laughs> Got a chook, chook tin for uh, Pooley. Straight from Amy Custom, the EMU exports. Exported straight from Amy. <laughs> Just before you get to Cactus Beach, you will hit Lake McDonald, probably one of the more famous pink lakes you're gonna find in South Australia. I'm going to wrap this episode up there. However, Team Nav ended up going through the outback to get home. I didn't plan on filming much, but there is so much cool stuff to see there. I've got a sneaky little bonus episode coming here, some juicy shots to get you excited.